Hey everybody, it's Gully here from the Wolves Fancast. Welcome to our new YouTube channel and uh, introducing you to a new feature that we're going to be bringing you on a week-to-week -week basis after every game where we look at the tactical innovations and nuances that Nuno sets the team up with uh, as he looks to evolve the system as he's spoken about so candidly in interviews recently. Um, now obviously we're going to look back at first at the, the last game against Fulham where we won 1-0 courtesy of a Pedro Neto goal. A um, couple of caveats before we start, I think it's worth pointing out that we're watching these games on television unfortunately. Now you pick up so much from a tactical perspective when you're live at games, you know, that you, you're slave to the TV cameras at the moment, but when you're live in the stadium you're picking up runs off the ball, you, you're seeing little uh, movements and, and, and things that are really, really important to the way teams play, which unfortunately we won't be able to, to necessarily observe from our armchairs. So, important caveat there and obviously for the foreseeable future that's the way it's going to be unfortunately but um other caveat we obviously weren't able to field a natural left wing back so is this game kind of taken in isolation to a certain extent probably but it's still worth considering the way that Nuno thinks and how he looked to combat the fact that you know Romain says was just doing the job for us basically and um, so if we get into it uh, the red magnets obviously display here the Wolves formation in our usual 3-4-3 and you've got Fulham in the blue. I think Fulham pretty much set up in a 4-4-2 with Bobby Reid kind of just sitting in as a midfielder as and when required. Look to make it really really frustrating for us and as you can see in terms of the wide areas it's quite a difficult formation to come up against when you're looking at wing backs as your main source of width. You can see here, especially in the left-hand side, they had um, Anthony Robinson and Joe Bryan, two natural natural left-backs on the flank that Nelson Semedo was occupying. They probably thought that Adam Troyore was going to start, and that's maybe the reason why they did that, but they just needed to shore up anyway. I think a lot of what they did was just as a result of some of the really poor form that they've shown uh, prior to playing this. So as you can see here, You've got two players in direct opposition to Semedo, which will prove difficult for anyone to overcome. Um, and he did okay, but I expect more to, to come from him uh, as the season goes on. Now, with regards to Romain Sace, obviously we're not expecting him to really come into this area and start whipping in crosses. It's not his game, but in terms of his attributes, how can you use them in a makeshift kind of role to benefit the team? And that's what Nuno did. I think it was really interesting how when the, the ball was ahead of um, the midfield in the forward areas, Romain Sace would kind of tuck in. We, we called him Roman, Roman Sace on the um, podcast related to the picture. So go back and have a listen to see what we thought about that there. But what would happen, Sace would tuck in here. Neves would obviously still have a midfield partner. And then Leander Denonka kind of has the license to go forward and attack the box. Pedro Neto would filter out wide and kind of still give you that width option. Max Kilman's obviously here. He's comfortable, he's a left-sided centre-back to kind of be in this position and distribute from there if needed as well. So we still retain that balance that Nuno likes to speak about all the time. There's a good case in point here where this worked quite nicely for us. Say's kind of pressured the Fulham defence in this kind of position in the first half. Yeah, they made a mistake. Pedro Neto came in and uh, picked up the loose ball, had a shot at goal, and Nelson Semedo was really nice and high, and um, forced a really, really good save out of Alphonse Ariel. That was the best chance we created in the first half, but it went to show where Sace, despite the fact he wasn't in his natural position, could still contribute um, nicely into our attacking play. If we revert back to how we set up, um, I think it was quite obvious given the fact that we just lost 4-0, there was a bit of a, a reservation from Nuno to necessarily go ahead and, and kind of step on to Fulham too much. Whereas Neves and Matinho against West Ham were kind of really high up against their midfield, I thought. You can see here that there are vast open spaces for Fulham to break on us. It was easy balls into the feet of Reid and Mitrovic and now obviously if we know anything about Alexander Mitrovic and his history with Conor Cody, it's a bit of a recipe for disaster to kind of allow him to get into one-on-one -on -one drills with him. So Neves, then Donka, sitting nice and deep, not in allowing any, any passes to come through there. I can remember one counter attack and that was in the second half where Adam Ola looking kind of, you know, sprung out of nowhere really to, to break on us. But other than that, Fulham didn't really get any chance to break at a uh, defence who did look vulnerable against West Ham, let's not forget. 
Um, Nick Allen's only had a bit of a field day against us, and I don't think Nuno is quite ready for these guys to just go man to man with our midfield, pressing on to their midfield to win the ball. There is a risk, obviously, always attached to pressing high, and that's it. And um, with the guys that we've got in place in defence, he's obviously not comfortable with the idea that they're, they're going to manage to handle that situation at the moment, which is fair enough. It might be the case that we need reinforcements going forwards in those positions. I think everybody understands that um, centre half is probably one of the positions we can strengthen from an individual perspective. But just keeping the unit nice and tight and keeping that clean sheet was really important for Nuno. Now, obviously, we, we don't um, expect to see Sace in this kind of position again. We're going to have a much more natural option on that left hand side. And I think it will all benefit the way we played from an attacking perspective, especially for these guys, Pedence and Meta. They didn't really get too much joy against Fulham, but when you get Samedo high, when you get Ike Nuri or Marcel really nice and high, what will happen is naturally defences will spread across the pitch and give him little pockets for Neto and Pedence and obviously Jimenez to kind of just play in and you know give them a little bit more space and time on the ball to turn and then we're at the defence. I think we had a big problem in that area against Fulham. Obviously, Cavett, because of that lack of natural width on the left-hand side. But going forward, I expect Samago to really feature quite um, heavily in, in our build-up play. Connor Cody will then have these little options where you see he doesn't necessarily do the big diags into the strikers anymore, but he's picking these passes into these holes for Pedenz, for Neto. And um, our play will be a lot more fluid and fluid as a result, I believe. So something to look forward to. Um, obviously we got the result that day, so whatever Nuno worked on tactically was genius. So looking forward to seeing how we set up against Leeds. It's Marcelo Bielsa. It's going to be an absolute, you know, fascinating battle from a tactical perspective for anybody. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, they're going to be a dangerous prospect, whatever happens. So perhaps um, a bit more of a conservative approach will be the way. But either way, we'll, uh, we'll bring you what we think of that game from a tactical perspective, using my handy tool here um, after, the, after that game, after that fixture. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys, and uh, we look forward to seeing you then.